Marfan syndrome is a genetic condition. It affects the fibrillin 1 gene, and people with Marfan syndrome have a mutation in that gene that results in too much of a special protein called transforming growth factor beta, which is found in connective tissues. Marfan syndrome affects one in 3,000. About three quarters of the cases are running in families. Uh, but one quarter of the children who have Marfan syndrome, nobody else in their family has it and they're the first person to have it. If you have any concerns that your child may have Marfan syndrome, it's important to get an expert opinion. Marfan syndrome affects all parts of the body. Often people's suspicions arise that somebody may have Marfan syndrome because the child or adult is particularly tall. Parents notice that their children are outgrowing the normal sizes of baby clothes and children's clothes and they're often the tallest in their class. They're often very slim as well. They tend to have very long fingers and they have bigger feet than other children of their age. One thing that's particularly often found in Marfan syndrome, but not everybody with Marfan has this, is a dip in the chest wall which we call pectus excavatum. People with Marfan syndrome have quite stretchy skin. When they're teenagers, they tend to get more stretch marks than other children. So there's quite a few symptoms of signs of Marfan syndrome. Some of the signs are specific to the eyes and an optician or an ophthalmologist may be the first person to suspect that there's a problem. People with Marfan syndrome also often have flat feet. Sometimes the uh, orthoptist or person looking after the patient's feet notices that possibly there may be Marfan syndrome. So there's quite a few different features and if you're concerned at all that a child or somebody you know may have Marfan syndrome it's very important to ensure that you see an expert because related to Marfan syndromes there can be very important problems with the heart which do need to be treated to keep your child safe. Marfan syndrome is diagnosed by geneticists and paediatricians and paediatric cardiologists. The definitive diagnosis is with a blood test where the genes are actually looked at to see if the person has the definite gene mutation associated with Marfan syndrome. Also, it's often diagnosed by a doctor who sees that a child has many of the features compatible with Marfan syndrome. Those would be issues with the eyes and also physical features. Often people with Marfan syndrome are extremely tall. They often have very long fingers. One of the things that doctors often ask them to do is to do this. And if you see my thumb is not extending beyond my, the palm of my hand, people with Marfan syndrome often have very long fingers, so the thumb might be extending further. You may see pictures of that on the internet. Also, when they put their hands around their wrist, their fingers are so long that they overlap. There are also people who don't have Marfan syndrome who are able to do that as well. So that's not a sign on its own, but it's putting together many of the features. So the patient, patient may have issues with their eyes, they may have a dip in their chest, we call pectus excavatum. They have very, their um, skin is more stretchy. So there's quite a number of features that are put together. And there's a formal system that geneticists use called the Ghent system. Uh, but the gold standard test is to do a genetic test, which is a blood test. Um, and this is uh, available um, all around the world. The most important feature for Marfan syndrome is complications associated with the heart. The key feature that as paediatric cardiologists we look for in patients with Marfan syndrome is the size of the aorta. The aorta is the large blood vessel that takes the red oxygenated blood from the heart around the body. Patients with Marfan syndrome, unfortunately, their aorta can stretch and become 
bigger than normal and if it gets too big this can be dangerous. So this is the most important feature of Marfan syndrome and if there's any concerns that somebody has Marfan syndrome they are always sent for an echocardiogram and possibly other forms of cardiac imaging to measure the size of their aorta. They can have other problems with their heart, uh, they can have problems with valves leaking, particularly the mitral valve, and sometimes they have a condition called mitral valve prolapse. But the most important issue uh, is always the aorta. Regarding other parts of the body and treatment, people with Marfan syndrome often have orthopedic bone type problems. They often have problems with curvature of the spine called scoliosis, and they may require expert treatment for that. They also must have regular eye checkups because they can get serious eye complications. They also can get problems with all of their joints. So each system requires a different doctor to look after them. So a patient with Marfan syndrome as a child will often be seeing a number of specialists. They'd be seeing a pediatric cardiologist to take care of their heart. They would be seeing an ophthalmologist to look after their eyes. They would be seeing a geneticist to help with the diagnosis. They may be seeing an orthopedic surgeon regarding the issues with the spine and also the chest wall. They may also be seeing allied health professionals regarding issues they may have with their feet. And also, it's important if your child has Marfan syndrome to let the school know because the child may need extra help to reach their full potential. Nowadays, people with Marfan syndrome, we also often send them to a pediatric endocrinologist. So that's a children's doctor with expertise in hormones so that we can address the issues of the child becoming excessively tall. There's a lot we can do now to help patients with Marfan syndrome. And the outlook if your child has Marfan syndrome is much, much better than it was decades ago. At the moment, reports state that life expectancy if someone has Marfan syndrome is around 70 years of age. However, we're in a really exciting time for patients with Marfan syndrome, which is fantastic. We now have new drugs which we can use to give to children, even very young children with Marfan syndrome to reduce or hopefully even stop aortic root enlargement. The issue that tends to affect patients' life expectancy is what happens to their aorta. Their aorta is the large blood vessel which takes the red oxygenated blood out of the heart. In patients with Marfan syndrome, through the years, the aorta can become too large and this can eventually become dangerous. But now we have a lot that we can do. We've become really good at the operations that we do uh, if an operation is required, if the aorta becomes too big. In addition, we have newer operations which we didn't have before, like the pairs operation, where we put a exostent, which is a 3D printed wrap individually made for the patient around the aorta to stop the aorta enlarging too much. And even before that, we now have drugs such as Erbisartan and Losartan and beta blockers, which we give to young children to try and slow down or prevent the rate of aortic root enlargement. These medicines can be given in liquid form as well, so we can start treatment very early. So actually, the lifespan of somebody born today or who is a child today with Marfan syndrome, I would say I will be extremely optimistic for them and hope that they have a very good lifespan. They may require some treatment during their childhood and their life. They may require uh, some hospital visits, but in between their quality of life, I would expect to be very, very good. And if you have a child and you're worried they may have Marfan syndrome, I would tell you and reassure you that all the expectations you have for their future, you should still keep them.